In this video, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know about antifreeze. What's up guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment. Let's go ahead and jump right on in and get to talking about antifreeze. Now, most of the time, whenever we hear the term antifreeze, we are thinking about that liquid that goes in our car, in our radiator to keep the engine cool and also to keep the water from freezing up over the winter. But there's not only this kind of antifreeze, which in vehicles is usually going to be called coolant, and we'll talk more about that here in a minute, but there is also antifreeze for other situations. So like what I've got here is a bottle of John Deere Cool Guard. This is going to be an engine coolant slash antifreeze. And then over here to my right is going to be RV antifreeze. Both are going to do the same job as far as keeping the water in our engines from freezing over, but they both are going to have totally different uses and need to be used in those places. So engine antifreeze can come in two different forms. We can get that bottle that is a fully concentrated version of the antifreeze itself, or we can get a pre-diluted bottle, which is going to be a 50-50 mixture of the antifreeze and water. And that is what's going to turn this product into what we call coolant. Now, antifreeze by itself without any water added to it is solely going to be an antifreeze concoction. So what that means is, is that without that water, you are not going to be able to raise the boiling temperature of that liquid and keep your engine safe from heat. Because what helps the antifreeze also be a coolant for your engine is going to be that water. Because water is going to be the heat displacement property of the coolant itself to help that engine stay cool. Whereas if we only had the antifreeze in it, we're only going to be protecting ourselves against the cold. Now that's gonna be one of the things that we'll talk a little bit more here about in a minute with the RV antifreeze is the fact that it does not have that water added in it. But for that antifreeze in our vehicles to work correctly, it does have to be either the pre-diluted 50-50 mixture or if we buy a concentrated version, we have to mix that water in to make sure that it does its job. Now with the engine antifreeze, there are going to be a ton of different brands. A lot of manufacturers are going to have certain brands that are going to be compliant with their engine. A lot of these coolants are going to have different properties in them. The main property that is going to be in all of the engine antifreeze is gonna be ethylene glycol. Now, this is the substance that makes engine antifreeze highly toxic. So we definitely wanna make sure that whenever we're messing with our engine antifreeze or coolant that we're keeping this away from children. Some of the times this is going to have a sweet smell and also a sweet taste to it. And that is because of the ethylene glycol. So it's very easy for animals, pets, maybe even children, if there's some of that spilled about, they may smell it. If they taste it, they may think, oh, this is okay, it tastes sweet but it is going to be highly toxic. So we need to make sure that we are watching out for that. Now, if you've ever had any dealings with antifreeze before, you'll have also noticed there are gonna be different colors of these antifreezes. A lot of times in engine antifreeze, we're going to have a green color, maybe a yellow or an orange. Now, a question that's often asked is, can I mix those colors? And the best response is actually no. We don't want to mix those colors because those are not colored just to distinguish between a different brand. The different colors are actually going to indicate the different properties that are within that antifreeze. So if we have a green coolant, this is going to have a lot of silicates in it. And what this does is to help remove any rust or damage that may already be in the system. So a lot of times what we wanna do is use a green antifreeze in an older vehicle that may have some of those issues within our radiator and other parts. That's going to help to remove those. We're also going to have the yellow and orange and a lot of these are going to have mainly just properties within them, chemicals within them that are going to prevent any rust or damage occurring in that system. Most of the time in our newer vehicles or newer machines, we're not going to see the green antifreeze. We're going to see a yellow or an orange because it is working on to go ahead and prevent 
any of that further damage. So for instance here, we'll go ahead and open up this bottle of John Deere Cool Guard. That way we can see the coloring that we have here. So I'm gonna pour about four ounces into our measuring cup here. And as we can see here with the John Deere Cool Guard, this is going to be that yellow color. So here, this is gonna be very, very light in silicates. This is mainly gonna have those properties in it that are going to keep the engine prevented from having any of that buildup. So there is what John Deere Cool Guard looks like. Once again, if we have another color within our vehicle, then we don't want to mix this with another color. All right, now let's talk about our RV antifreeze. Now, RV antifreeze is going to be very different. This is just going to be an antifreeze solution. This does not have the properties or the water within it to raise the boiling point of that solution. So this is not going to be something that we wanna run in our engine. However, if you are putting up a machine for winter that is a water-cooled system, you can put RV antifreeze in your engine cooling system just for storage over the winter, just to make sure that none of that's going to freeze up and crack anything in your engine. But we would have to drain this at the beginning of spring or summer whenever we're gonna start using that machine as you cannot run this at those high temperatures because it will fail. So. Mainly what our RV antifreeze is going to be used for is, of course, one of them is going to be RVs. We can also use this in boats. We can use this in multiple different applications, plumbing systems, things like that. And the reason why we can use that in those places is because it does not have that toxic chemical in it. It's going to have a different composition that is non-toxic. So for instance, if you are an RV owner and you have to winterize your machine, of course we know that with RVs, we're going to have a full plumbing system to the bathroom, to the kitchen sink, to whatever those properties are on that machine that are going to have water lines. This is what is gonna be, be preferred to use as it is non-toxic. So if we have to fill maybe that storage tank of water over the winter, but we don't wanna get rid of all of that water, we can mix in the RV antifreeze, make sure and run that system and that will keep things from gelling up. Now, we also can use this RV antifreeze whenever we're talking about winterizing, maybe our small engine units, not in the engine, but if you have some sort of piece of equipment, say like a pressure washer, you can use this to winterize that pump because this is going to get rid of that water. It's not going to freeze. It's going to keep everything nice and, seal and sealed up. And this is also really going to be good for conditioning different rubber seals that may also be in these plumbing systems. So this typically, whenever we're talking about color, we're going to be mainly seeing pink. Sometimes you'll hear RV antifreeze just called the pink stuff because it is almost always pink. A lot of times this is done to make sure that we don't accidentally put this in our automobiles or other pieces of equipment. We know if we see pink, we don't wanna put this in the engine, except for those rare occasions, like I said, that you want to use this to winterize and then drain and refill with an actual coolant. So now we'll go ahead and of course you can see this through the bottle, but I wanna go ahead and pour some of this out into our measuring cups. As next up, what we're going to do is show a weight test between these two antifreezes and then also water here. So we'll get ourselves another four ounces here, right there. Like I said, very vibrant, very pink. You can definitely tell that this is going to be the RV antifreeze here. Now, we talked about that water, and I do have a bottle of water here. We'll go ahead and put four ounces in this cup as well. One thing about these antifreezes is because they have those different chemicals and different composition, they are typically going to be heavier of course, than your average water. And then also one thing that I'll point out, whenever we put our engine coolant, our cool guard on the scale here, actually what you would have if we had just plain antifreeze is it would be double or at least more than what this is going to weigh because this does have 50% water in it. All right, so we'll go ahead and break out our scale here. And we're just gonna start to have a constant here we are going to start with our water. 
So as we can see there, this is going to weigh 4.5 ounces with the water. Now we'll go with the RV antifreeze. And now we are at five ounces, so we're going to be slightly heavier with the RV antifreeze. So that right there shows you right off the bat that we do have additives in this liquid. Then we'll go here with our engine coolant. And we are at that 4.9 ounces. Now what this shows is that with those extra added components to our two antifreeze liquids, we are going to be significantly heavier than water. Now it doesn't seem like much. We're talking about half an ounce on both of these, but whenever we jump up into gallons, we're talking about a gallon of water versus a gallon of each one of these liquids. You're going to have a significant difference there, but here we're only looking at four ounces here that we're measuring. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind is this engine coolant here already has the water mixed in. So if you took that 50% water out and this was a concentrate, this would be significantly heavier. And it is meant to be that way because it is going to have a lot of extra additives to make sure and take care of your engine. A lot of different chemicals and additives that are going to prevent against that corrosion and to also help protect your cooling system when we're talking about the rubber hoses, seals, all of those different things. Now on the RV antifreeze, this is going to be as heavy as it gets. This is already at full strength. This is exactly what you would pour into your system. Now, and the reason why that is, is because sometimes you're gonna be pouring this into the system that already has water in it. So it needs to go ahead and be at full strength, but because it is not working towards protecting as many metal elements as we are in an engine antifreeze, it's not quite as dense and heavy. And lastly, our biggest question normally when it comes to antifreeze or coolant is how often do I need to change this? Now, I know that there are a lot of people out there that have probably never even thought to change their coolant. I've uh, heard stories from people that have had a vehicle for over six years, never even touched the coolant when it goes in for its oil change. The guys at the tire shop check it and they top it off if they need to. And all of that's fine as long as you are not seeing any issues issues with your cooling system. If you're not seeing your vehicle overheat or having a hard time starting from the cold, then you're probably okay. But each manufacturer of antifreeze is going to have a certain limit on when you should change this fluid in your vehicle. We have to think about this just like we do any other liquid that's in our vehicle, whether it be engine oil or transmission fluid or power steering fluid. Over time, the, the chemical composition of this substance is going to have its breakdowns just like every other type of liquid. It's also going to have the chance of getting dirty, which is going to also change how well it works. So we need to be making sure and checking what the requirements are on the different types of antifreeze that we're getting. For instance, here with the Cool Guard 2 from John Deere, this is generally a six year, 6,000 hour change. But the suggested thing is to go ahead and check this antifreeze once a year to make sure things that we're gonna be looking for whenever we are checking our antifreeze or engine coolant is we want to make sure that it is staying this color and this consistency. We don't want to be seeing a shaded or milky color in it. What that's showing is that it is pulling a lot of erosion out of your system and that is going to hurt the way that it functions. We also wanna check and see even if it looks okay, we wanna check and make sure that it is holding true to its standards of keeping your engine safe by that freezing point and boiling point. So what we can do is get ourselves a simple ball tester here, or you can also buy strip testers that we dip down in it. This will tell you at what point this liquid is going to boil and cool at. So here I've got a ball tester here, and what we are looking for in this is to have all five of these balls floating. So I'm gonna go ahead and test that now. What you're gonna do is simply squeeze the top, stick our hose down in the coolant, let that suck our coolant up. And as you can see there in the tester, all five of those balls are floating. That top one is, they are floating so hard that that top one is poking up out of the liquid there in the top. So you are good here with all five balls floating to be at negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit 
freezing point, and then a boiling point of 271 degrees Fahrenheit. So this coolant is good to go. So we'll go ahead and just squeeze that all back out just like that. Now I'm going to show you the difference here by squeezing up some of this water. So if we suck up that water, remember we have no chemical composition in this. Now what you're going to have here, as we can see, is only one ball floating. And it tells us right here on the gauge that if only one ball is floating, we are only protected to a plus 20 degrees Fahrenheit freezing point and a plus 255 degrees boiling point. So what you're seeing here is the difference in the composition of the water and the antifreeze. And what we would be looking for whenever we're testing is we wanna make sure that all five of those balls are floating. If they're not, we may need to add some coolant to our radiator, to our system. A lot of times what we think is, is that whenever our cooling system is low, that reservoir is low, we can just top it off with some water. And sometimes that can be okay in the summertime, just topping that off with water until you can get some coolant. But you need to make sure that we are keeping our system at that 50-50 mixture of coolant and water to make sure to not only keep it from freezing, but also to protect it from the heat element because we're talking about an engine running, multiple different explosions happening all simultaneously within that engine, a lot of heat, a lot of moving parts. So the coolant is a very, very important part of our engine and the way it runs. So I hope you liked this video, guys. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, we just asked that you would hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, guys, if you're looking for any John Deere parts at all, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey, guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.